G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Bit of a different scene at the moment. I'm actually outside my studio in the workshop area for this Fixed Wing Friday and it's because I've done something. I've done something that's really important for the Fixed Wing Reviews. I'll show you now. Um, come around this side, excuse me. I've got the, oh, got the camera on a tripod but I'm having trouble because I've had to move so much stuff around here that the place is just a complete and utter mess. <laughs> excuse me while I fumble around but I'm going to show you something here. Look at this. Can you see that? Do you know what that is? That is my build table. And you might think, ah, oh, it's just a build table. So what, well, I'm gonna show you over here what was on the build table, what the build table was under. Look, look, look down here, look at this mess. Look at, look at that. I mean, some might be kind and call it a collection of things, but it's actually just a complete not a mess. There is so much crap there, and most of it was on top of my build table, so I have spent many, many hours today extricating the build table so that I can do Fixed Wing Friday. Woohoo, that's what I've done. I hope I've done it. So, without further ado, let's get on, have a look at what I've got on the bench today. Right, first of all, I have to apologise for the crappy lighting because I haven't got my overhead fluorescence installed yet and I'm going to be putting a couple of shelves in overhead fluorescent with some extra lighting, so hopefully things will look a lot better. And of course, it's, uh, we've had a crappy day again, it's been overcast and it's threatening to rain, but hey, uh, it was nice this morning, nice and calm and warm, but I didn't have anything built to fly, so... I'm going to walk you through the Wingnetic. Now this is a Hobby King model. I bought it quite a long time ago. I think, I think they still sell them though. And I bought it originally to put a pulse jet on because it looked great because having two fins like this, the pulse jet, pulse jet could pass down the middle, but it's just too small. It's only 850 millimeters and that's a lot smaller than I'd imagined in my tiny little mind. So I'm going to power it conventionally now. I bought the ARF model, not the plug and fly, because obviously if I was going to put a pulse jet on it, I didn't want a motor and an ESC, and I didn't want to use crappy little plastic geared 5 gram servos with all that power. So I have basically just got the shell, really, and I'm going to put my own servos in. I've only got 9 gram servos, so I'll use those. Um, I'm sure that won't be too much weight for it to carry. One servo goes in the back here for the elevator, and then we have a servo under each wing here for yeah, that's the right way. Servo under the wing here for each aileron. So it's, it's a three servo model, and that's basically three channels. There's no, the rudders, should I say the vertical stabilizers, don't have a rudder on them, so there's no rudder on this. So it's a bank and yank, which isn't a problem because I'm picking this will be a speed machine. I'm going to try and make it into a speed machine. And the, the original motor, here's the instructions by the way, it comes with instructions. Woo -hoo. The original motor for this was supposed to be a 2630 1200kV, and that's quite a big motor. I mean, for example, this is a, uh, this is a, what is it, a 23, 22, 2207. So, yeah, that looked much smaller. But these things can produce nearly a, kilo, a kilogram of thrust. And this is not going to weigh in anywhere near a kilogram. So I'm picking that this will have plenty of power. This is a uh, 2700 kV motor. And I'm going to use this on the front instead of the motor they provide, which means I will not be using the folding propeller. You see, I'll pull in a bit tighter so you can see this stuff a little better. And again, I apologise for the crappy lighting. Um, yeah, this is the folding prop, um, which is about a 6 or 7 inch, I think. I haven't measured it. This is the motor I'm going to be using. And of course, I can't use this motor with that prop because it comes with a collet, which looks like it's for about a 3.2 millimetre shaft. And of course, these come with a 5 millimetre shaft. So I'm just going to mount this on the front of the motor mount, rather than normally they'd be sort of behind with the shaft coming through. I'm going to mount it on the front of the motor mount, and the motor mount itself goes on the front of the wing netic like this, providing the right angles of down thrust and side thrust. So the motor will be out a bit proud, but I don't think it's going to create much in the way of drag. I won't be using a spinner, again, because these motors don't lend themselves to spinners. So I'm going to make it into a raw speed machine. The motor will get lots of cooling, is the, the, the bonus of that. And uh, with the 9 gram servos, the Oops, pretty fast mini quad motor and a, I don't know, might even try a three blade prop on it, although they're not the best for speed. But we'll see how the whole thing works out. So I'm getting used to framing here because I'm looking at a funny angle at my camera so I can't, it's hard to keep things in shot. Oh, it's terrible. Anyway, now this is the start of a work in progress. Yeah, came also with a whole bunch of hardware, um, horns, push rods, bits of extra foam for something or other. So yeah, if you buy the plug and fly version, I, I'm really never much of a fan of plug and fly because you end up getting real crap ass servos, you usually get marginal ESCs and you've got no control over whatever because, um, for example, um, Chris from iForce 2D bought one of these. This is the Mini Talon. Let me pull out a bit here wrong way. Yep, everything's backwards in this particular setup. He bought one of these Mini Talons from XUAV. He bought the plug and fly one and I noticed one of his aileron servos is really loose, the other one's fine. Because you don't get a chance to 
check these things out before you do it. So I've got my own servos. I'll make sure I use servos that are up to scratch. And I won't have that problem. I won't get flutter on the other ends because the servos are a bit loose. So, yeah, that's what we do. It comes with glue as well. So, yeah, not much else to say. Now, I'm going to put this together. It's unfortunately quite late in the day because it has been a long day, as I said, extricating this table from the pile of crap. So I will put this together now. It's supposed to piss down, or sorry, supposed to rain tomorrow. Some precipitation is forecast for tomorrow. And Sunday is supposed to be very, very windy. So it's unlikely I'll be flying this in the next two days. But I will be flying it before next Fixed Wing Friday. So this will be, um, part two of this review will be up long before next Fixed Wing Friday. So next Fixed Wing Friday will be a different model. And oh my goodness, how many have I got to choose from? One of the reasons I got this out of the pile of junk was because not only do I have the wingnetic to do, I do have this mini talon in, and this is not going to be a normal mini talon review, I've got to say, because when I found this was too small for my pole sheet, I decided to buy one of these to put the pole sheet on. It's got a V-tail, which again makes it perfect for pole sheet. So that will be a pole sheet review. So if you, it'll be a flight test of the Hobby King pole sheet and a flight test of the mini talon. So that's something to really look forward to. I also have the uh, hub, what is it, the Taft Hobbies Viper Jet in the studio, which I will be, it's almost ready to go. I've just got to uh, play around a little bit with some of the sequencing because it doesn't seem to work very well. And I have the RV Jet, I have the TBSRC Wing, I have the Mini Speed Wing from Germany. And so, yeah, there is a lot of stuff. This bench is going to get a real workout over the next few weeks. In fact, this is going to be the summer of fixed wing. The summer of fixed wing here in the Southern Hemisphere. So stay tuned if you're a fixed wing lover. You will not be short of content on this channel, but there will still be some mini quad stuff. There'll still be some rotary wing stuff. So, you know, you're not gonna, we're not going to forget the mini quad people. Still plenty of stuff. One of the other projects that I've got lined up, of course, is um, this is my Hobby King Eagle. As, as you know, you've seen the review of this. I'm going to put a run cam eagle on it, and I'm going to go and make a covert FPV craft. An FPV model that you can't tell is a model from the ground because these look so damn real. And so some of the limitations associated with flying FPV might be able to, I won't say break the rules, but you'll be able to fly in a more relaxed fashion with your FPV eagle if, you, if it works out all right. And I'll put a long range receiver in it, but I will never fly beyond visual line of sight. I'll always have an observer and only fly in approved places. Of course, that's the way the rules work. There you go. So um, yeah, heap of stuff. I've got some more stuff coming from Banggood. They're sending me a couple of fixed wing models to review. And I've ordered some other bits from other places. So yeah, it's going to be a busy summer. I'm really looking forward to it. Once the weather settles a bit. There you go. Questions, comments in the usual place. I'll do my best to answer them. Now I've got to get on, get this wingnetic thing sorted so that as soon as the weather clears, we can have a flight test. And you might find that building it the way I build it gives better performance than the plug and fly. We don't know, but we will find out. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. I've got to get back to the build table. Woohoo!